Welcome back to NB Media and Content. In today's video, I will be featuring a 1991 Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.3. And in this video, I'll be going through the exterior and interior, its features and specifications, and then I'm going to take it out for a drive. Okay, some key things you need to know. This was the company's first compact class automobile known to Mercedes enthusiasts as the W201 series. It offered technology and luxury from their bigger saloon cars, but in a smaller and more affordable package. As a result, it was a huge sales success, as they produced over 1.8 million units over its 11 year lifespan. The W201 debuted at the 1982 Paris Motor Show and then ran production until 1993 when it was replaced by the W202 C-Class. When this 190E was new in Australia, it retailed from around 88,000 Australian dollars. Before we start, I'd like to introduce Lonnie from Flawless Auto Detailing. Lonnie, what exactly do you do? Thanks for having me, Nick, and thanks for reviewing my car. My primary work is uh, detailing cars, paint correction, ceramic coating. Also, we do wheel repairs and uh, some rolling restorations. Specialized mostly in the early 90s, late 80s Mercedes, you know, powder coating, rocket covers, doing the wheels. I'll link your details in the description below, but for now let's start with the tour with your W201. Moving on to the exterior design, it may look boxy, but this car was actually designed to be very aerodynamic in the wind tunnel. You can see those design elements on the bonnet, windscreen, the wheels and other parts of the body. The W201 was offered in a mixture of metallic and solid colours. This one is finished in pageant red metallic and the W201 was designed by Bruno Sacco. Moving on to the front part of the car, we've got the classic traditional Mercedes-Benz grille, Bosch headlights with the orange indicators and because this is an update series, you have the extra body cladding on the lower parts of the bumper bars and from the side that extra body cladding continues with the Sacco panels unique to the update series and the W201 features these 15 inch alloy wheels and at the back we have the classic Mercedes-Benz ribbed taillight design to prevent snow build up during winter, the additional third stop lamp and then we come to the badging, 190 was the model name E stood for fuel injection and the 2.3 meant it was a 2.3 four cylinder. Let's talk about the interior design. It looks a little bit basic. The only luxury piece you get is the little wood trim in the center. However, what you do get is a similar layout from other Mercedes-Benz models from the 1980s. Similar build quality, switch gear and dashboard materials like what you would find on a W126 S class and a W124 E class. There were a number of colours to choose and different materials like fabric, velour, leather and Embitex, which this example is equipped with and finished in cream beige. Key specifications included an electric sliding power sunroof with the tilting device, sun visors with the vanity mirrors, air conditioning, a four spoke leather wrapped steering wheel, a leather gear knob, a folding armrest, electric windows front and rear, an electric passenger mirror, however manual for the driver's side, a Becca Mexico radio, however this one's been updated with the Mercedes-Benz slash Continental which gives it a retro look with modern functions and lastly cruise control which was an option that hadn't been fitted to this example. And up ahead of you a distinctive Mercedes-Benz gauge cluster showing in kilometres. On the left side it shows your fuel, temperature and oil pressure in the center, a speedometer going up to 220. And as you can see, this example has traveled 68,000 kilometers. And then on the right, a rev counter and a clock. And then if I draw your attention to the bottom, that's where you'd find all your warning labels. And just on the right, we have the headlights, indicators, and then a little button on top of the air conditioning vent to turn on the backlight. And moving on to practicality, there was a decent sized glove box with two not so useful cup holders, matte pockets on the doors, and this cutaway in the centre console. And then we move to the back seats. As you can see, there isn't really much room as this was a compact series for Mercedes-Benz. There's not really much room for adults. However, this example does have the armrests, the electric windows, which I believe to be an option. Then if we move towards the boot, I just push this button here. It reveals 410 litres of space, a little bit of plastic on the side. If we lift up the carpet map, it reveals the spare tyre, the original jack, and as you can see, this car has its original warning triangle. 
and to make the scene a little bit more interesting, I've laid out all of the car's original factory literature with the original service logbooks. Very impressive to see a car of this age with all of its original books and literature. Uh, with that out of the way, let's move on to the powertrain. And just have a look at the overall condition of the engine bay. The air cleaner and rocker cover gasket has been professionally powder coated by Lonnie and the bonnet lining has been replaced as well. It is a credit to the owner for putting all his time and effort into this engine bay and the overall car just with the restoration. This engine is the M102.985. It is a 2.3 naturally aspirated inline four cylinder. Turning cycle, huh? Yeah, the turning circles are good on these. Yeah, I find that they camber a lot when they turn. The steering wheel doesn't like to go back. Yeah, and actually- You have to assist it. When I saw you coming in, it, the, I saw the camber, the car was rolling a little bit. Yeah, it goes on a very deep angle when they turn these old mercs. Just impressions, the car feels very tiny. It does feel compact. Mm. But because the turning circle is really good, uh, the car actually has really good handling. It's, yeah, it's quite... actually a lot better than a C-Class W202. Really? It's a little bit more nimble. And just the engineering that went into the, the whole suspension. Oh yeah, that was revolutionary. That's, um, that made way for the uh, 124 suspension, all, all thanks to this car. Uh, this came before the 124, so a lot of the things that w went into the 124 came from this. So, and they spent some ridiculous amount of money, four billion Deutschmarks or something or whatever it was, back then developing the suspension and just the whole car in general. But this is far the best one I've, I've driven so far. To drive every day, you'd really have to buy one in good condition, good air conditioning, oh. uh, good suspension. I mean, they can. You, you good can, luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. This is that, the best that, example in all of Australia, I'd say. No, we've had a couple of 190s. This is the fourth 190 we've owned. We had two 180Es, you know, but they were nowhere near as good as this car. They were really nowhere slow, near. the 180s. Um, look, I mean, they had their ups and downs. They were, it's all about the gearing in those cars, you know. You can adjust the uh, the Bowden cable and get them a lot more lively. Yeah, no, they're not a powerhouse, that's for sure, but efficient and they're still good on the highway. Once you get up to highway highway uh, cruise speeds, you're, you're good, you know? That's the same with this. Once you get it up to speed, it, it's fine. But you know what? There's still something so charming about the base models. Just because they're tiny, they're small, they're a little bit more nimble than the bigger saloon car. And my mate John Vorden, he likes to throw his 192 around corners. I have driven yeah. one from Melbourne to Sydney, yeah. but um, that, that, that had around 170,000 kilometres. It, it did feel worn out but this one just feels really tight, tight and yeah. in terms of mechanical what restorations have you have just, you done to it just um I just had when i got it it wasn't running properly so i just went through the whole fuel system just all your fuel stuff with these cars if they sit too long they 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 turn they really don't drive well these these old um k-jetronic um mercedes fuel injection um the rest was uh, uh tires and I changed the pads and the discs just you know they weren't that bad but I just did it just to refresh the car so mainly you know? just fuel system and general maintenance yeah just general maintenance oil oil filter and even though this was the entry level uh, Mercedes to buy it was oh still... you still would have been something special it was worth a house in Sydney yeah um, back then so everyone has got an AMG every Tom Dick and Harry will buy, can buy an AMG you know, so it's not special anymore, but once upon a time, you had a Mercedes, just the brand Mercedes, you were special, you know. And the 124 CE is worth two houses, and the, the, the SEC was probably three houses in Sydney. Hmm. So. And there was no finance at the time? Oh, then? no, no. I think BMW had just started that in the early 90s, and everyone else trended, trended along along those lines thank you Lonnie for allowing me to film your car and it's thanks for filming it it's a beautiful example I've uh, spent the time thanks, thanks Lonnie mate. and feel free to check out Lonnie his details and are in the description below